And now for the world's most beautiful equation. It is just proof that e to the i describes a circle which has radius 1 and center 0. And the reason it's so damn beautiful is that it contains 0, which is the additive identity element. In other words, 0 does not change the result of addition. 1, the identity element of multiplication. E, the most important physical constant. Pi, the most important mathematical constant. And I, the number that is not even a number. It's a rotation and a number. In an easier form, the equation just states that minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 because e to the i pi is just minus 1. Why? Because pi is a 180 degree rotation. It reverses things on the number line. This was called Euler's identity and not Euler's formula. Euler's formula is the next thing which is much more important. This is the thing that clicks everything together. Remember the connection between the circle and the wave? This is what it is. But now purely based on numbers and functions. e to the i phi is equal to cosine phi plus i sine phi. Sine and cosine are just mathematical ways of saying wave. We now have a mathematical way of saying circle, e to the i phi. And we also know that two waves, 90 degrees from each other, give out a circle. If we look at the complex number as a rectangle, the base of it, the real line, is the length of the cosine of the angle, while the height is equal to the side of it. This does not only break down the circle into two waves, it also solves the problem of why cosine and sine complement each other. It's because together they are a circle. And why is it I sine? Well, first of all, it's to make them 90 degrees apart. But the second reason why I sine and why not I cosine is because sine, the sine of the angle, is the part uh, that corresponds to the imaginary uh, axis of the number. I haven't found a good visualization anywhere, so I tried to draw one. I didn't put too much effort into it, so it's ugly, but that's what you get. It shows the gist of it perfectly. What you see here is two waves 90 degrees from each other moving in unison. Imagine that the circle goes around and you just see how the wave is drawn out. Exactly the same thing as when one wave was waving but now it's two and they are 90 degrees apart and this also shows that there's nothing imaginary about that imaginary line it's just the number line and the final thing this is good for is to make up waves from circles here I'm showing you the formulas these are very logical so just look at it and try to visualize you now understand each and every element but even if that's not enough here I give you an image on this you exactly see where the sine is where the cosine is and how each and every element is arranged around this circle and this opens up a gateway to higher mathematics but don't let me get started on that one ladies and gentlemen this is really one of the most magical things in the world of mathematics. And Euler's name is written all over it. But it gets way too much credit for the complex numbers. It's a historical fact that the first time the imaginary unit was mentioned was about 200 years before Euler was born. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know where it was. But they knew it existed. They called it I because they knew nothing about the imaginary unit. The idea of complex numbers was pretty well known before Euler. Bernoulli was even contemplating complex logarithms. All Euler did was took Bernoulli's complex logarithms 
and wrote up the complex exponential. He came to what we know today as Euler's formula only through algebraic means. He has never seen what I have just shown you. The geometrical interpretation and therefore understanding of complex numbers came from Jean-Robert Argand. He was only a bookstore manager. As he was going through the books, he discovered what complex numbers truly represented. He published it and the circle is named in his honor as the Argand diagram. It's always the big names that get the credit and then the historians have to go and realize that results are much more evenly distributed than we think. It was the hands of many people who completed this work. Most notably Kaspar Vessel, who was a map maker. He discovered the same thing Argon did just years before him. He only published it in a kind of journal that's rarely read outside of Denmark. And so it was a noticed before Argand.